Hi there. We are going to work on another sewing project. This time, flared pants. It is McCall's 8206. Now, ultimately, we're going to work on this one. It is the flared pants, but I'm going to omit all those cargo pockets because I just don't want that. Um, but I will be putting these uh, upper pockets on. So, pants are always a challenge, and I usually avoid them because who needs that headache? But I like this style. The pattern was on sale, and I have enough extra of that brown corduroy from the potato dress that I think it would make up cute. But before I cut into that corduroy, I'm going to be making a mock-up because here's the deal. According to their sizing, my measurements are my hips are 44, so it's way over on a size 20. My waist is just under, it's like 29-ish, 29-ish. So according to them, my waist measurement, I should be a size 16. So I've got a lot of, of leeway there. Now it looks like pant view A, they want you to do it in two different fabrics. I'm not going to do that. But they're short. It's like a culotte length, which you can't really tell from here because there's nothing to compare it to. But this is actually like a culotte type uh, pant. So that might be cute sometime. But anyway, the um, view A, like I said, it's very clean, no pockets, it looks like, just pants. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing for my mock-up because it's the same piece here, just longer, for view C. So here's the patterns. I've cut out my pattern pieces. I actually decided I am not going to be doing the front pocket because I never use a front pocket in jeans, but I will be putting the two back pockets on because storage for phone, and they do a great job of disguising a panty line. So, there you go. I cut out the um, pants, pant pieces, in a size 20. I cut out the waistband pieces in a size 16. And here's the reason. My waist is a size 16. It's, it's like 29 inches. And, um, but my hips are not. So because they have these graduated sizing lines, I'm going to take advantage of that and see how accurate they are. So for all of my four pattern pieces, you can see they have uh, the size 20 is the outside, the solid line is the 16. And at the weight, at the hip line, and usually they have this double lengthen or shorten here, I'm going to take it from that point and ease it up to the waist for each piece, which should get me, I want to try to find the same curve that I have here, which is right about there, and move it out. Just how I do it to each his own. Um, so that will be my new cutting line here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for each of the pieces. The um, Let's do the center one. This one that has the fly on it. So all of this stuff down here below the fly, I'm leaving at the size 20 because I would prefer to have a deeper crotch. You know, nobody likes wedgies. This up here, we are, if we, at, at this fold line, I mean at this cutting line right here, okay, these placement lines are for that side pocket, so just ignore all of these lines here. This is supposed to be one nice smooth center line. So for this piece, because there, this seam goes down the very front of the leg, I'm actually going to blend it in a little longer than just at the hip line, just because I, I, want, I don't want it to be obvious that there's an angle there. On the side, on the hip, it's not as bad. So 
This is actually going to be angled pretty close to where the crotch line is. But I think that if I make this my cutting line, it will blend. We aren't going to see that. So that's my strategy. I'm going to go ahead and cut the other two and then lay it out. I have my pants pattern cut out and ironed and I found this piece of a black linen look fabric. It's probably polyester but it looks pretty nice. And I'm thinking I'm going to make that culotte version out of this because if it turns out well it'll be great. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get that cut out one piece at a time. Okay, so I want to show you what we've got here. I've got all of my pieces cut out of the main fabric. So we have our side front, front, back, side back, a black seven inch zipper. This piece is the carrier for all the belt loops. Uh, two back pockets and there are three pieces to the waistband. These I will be cutting out of the fusible interfacing also. Hello, welcome to day two. This morning we're going to be putting on our zipper, which is always a challenge, but we can do this. So what we're going to be doing first is this line here is, you can see here, they mark them. Okay. This line here is my center front, this one. And we're going to be um, doing like a basting stitch down the center front. At this point, I'll be backing up, reinforcing, and then continue to where my notch is. I've marked my notch with my pins, just so I'm aware, uh, with a regular stitch. So that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so looking at our little diagrams, we've done this. Now what we're going to do is fold our pants back in half here, so they are in half. This is the fold line. This fold line here, okay? And the square is our little dot at the bottom. So I have folded the left front on that fold line and I marked with a pin where that little dot would be. Now, what it says here is I'm replacing the closed zipper face up under the left front, right here. Okay, extension, I can't read with that covering it up. Placing the zipper stop at the square and the zipper teeth close to the pressed edge. Okay, so right along here. And I'm going to stitch close to this edge. So I'm going to be stitching down the edge of this folded part. That's all that I'm catching is the fold and the zipper tape. The rest of the pants are all over here. So this is what it looks like. It's been sewn down the edge. Now what it says is to, you basically close it so you're looking at an upside down zipper here, okay? I mean, you, you don't close it. You, you're leaving it closed. You just turn it so it's the zipper part, the flappy part is facing down. Okay, and you have this open, so both pieces of the pants are over here on the left side, but your right flap is sticking out. What we're going to be doing is sewing that. It says pin remaining zipper tape, that's this part, to the right front extension zip keeping front free. So we're keeping the front free by keeping it over here. So I'm going to be coming back and stitching this side again with my little narrow foot along the teeth. And it's only catching the tape and the little flap. So sewing on flies is a nightmare, I gotta tell you. Not, not a big fan, but it's like doing a puzzle. So now, <laughs> we're over here and opening up 
wait, 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 not opening up yet. On step D, turn the right front extension towards the front and baste in place. All right. So this is our right front extension here. Towards the front and just baste in place. So we're wanting to hold it so that it, uh, and where do they want it basted? On the fabric part. <coughs> I'm going to machine baste it just since I'm here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lengthen my stitch. Okay. And not back stitching, just going down. I am redrawing my um, stitching line, this stitching line onto the outside because I need to be able to see it. So here's a helpful hint when you're doing them in the first place. Put that stitching line on the right front outside. Anyhow, so I've redrawn my stitching line this is my basting stitches I just put in to hold it in place. I'm going to be taking those out. So now I'm going to be sewing this stitching line, pulling out this basting stitch, this basting stitch that's in here, and then pressing the whole thing. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, get my iron hot enough. We're going to go ahead and press this. Hopefully, the fabric won't shine up. Let's see. I haven't taken those basting stitches out yet. I wanted to press it while the stitches were still in to hold it in place really well. You can see on this side, because I was, sorry about the wiggle, when I pressed it, all of the markings disappeared, which is nice. It's nice when something goes according to plan. Here we have it, our finished fly. I've pulled out the basting stitches here, pulled out the basting stitches here. We're ready to unzip. I don't think I can do it with one hand, but we can unzip it. It's nice and secure. And honestly, the fly is usually the worst part in making pants. So mission accomplished. We're gonna just get on a roll now. Okay, so I wanted you to see off camera, I went ahead and surged around this piece and I'm just surging around all of my, my leg pieces so that they don't unravel. But surge the side fronts, sewed them together, and then you can see they have you come back and top stitch with the seam allowances pressed towards the center. That went really well. So far this pattern's going together very, very well. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is assembling the side back and center back pieces separately. So one cheek and then the other. And once I have those assembled the same way, sewing them together, top stitching, then I will um, fold in the edges of my pocket and attach it in the appropriate places. And um, honestly, this is going together well. So far, so good. Okay, I want to show you the backs as they are right now. I have this one side completed. So just like the front, you sew the center seam and do a row of top stitching. And then um, we put on a pocket. Now this one I have not completed yet. Just to show you on the pattern, they give you two dots and those mark the top squares for the pocket. And this is a pocket that it's in mid, mid assembly. So what you do first is fold up the top edge, fold the whole thing and do two little seams down the side. Now I'm going to clip the corners just to take some of the bulk out. Turn this top right side out. And then when we press it, It'll have a nice edge on the top. I also go back and run a, uh, come on, fold in there, a top edge, top stitch type, right? Very, very close to this folded edge. And then what you're gonna do is fold all of these sides in a uniform amount, press them. And once it's all pressed, then you can 
pin it, match it up to your dots, and stitch it on. So I just realized that the uh, microphone was off when I was recording this, so I'm going to try to voice over. I went ahead and sewed the sides of the front piece to the back piece and press those seam allowances open. That's what I was showing you. The next step is to sew the inseams. So I've put those together. After you sew them, you're also going to be pressing those open. This is the diagram on how to sew that crunch seam where you sew it once, reinforce it again, and then they want you to trim it close to the stitching line. I am actually not going to be making that final trim. What I'm going to be doing is notching it with the overcast edge just to make sure that it doesn't fray because this fabric it seems to be fraying quite a bit. But when I notch it, it should give the flexibility that I need. So the next thing that the directions say is to reinforce the waistband so it doesn't stretch and apply interfacing to the three waistband pieces. Keep track of which ones are your facing and which one are the main waistband. If they both look the same on both sides, that can be tricky. So you apply the waistband, sew the side seams together, and then we're going to make our carrier where we fold that long strip in half, turn it right side out, and top stitch it. Here I'm just demonstrating one of my little loop turners. There's several different kinds. I'm using the one that looks kind of like a medical device. You push it on, slowly pull the fabric over it until your little tip is sticking out, and then you can just pull the whole thing off and pull it through very easily. It's a handy device. We're going to be cutting our carrier strip into four pieces. I believe they are three and three quarter inches long. The strip you have is a little longer than you need, so you can go ahead and trim off the edges just to make it nice and square so that it's easy to deal with. So at this point, you have your waistband sewed together with one layer of fabric, a layer of interfacing, and these double dots I'm pointing out are the marks where your carrier is going to be attached. So you just line it up with the edge and you baste it on. I think I'm basting it at about 3 eighths or a quarter inch. It's just to hold it in place so that when you come back and stitch the top and bottom seams, it will hold, it'll catch it. And here the belt loops are, they're basted in place. And you can see it's a style concept of this pattern where the loop is actually a lot wider than the waistband. And it, it's so that it kind of hangs down some. It's hard to explain now, but it looks nice. So now that the space stitching is done on top, we'll go ahead and uh, sew the waistband onto the pants, which is exciting. So matching up the side seams, match up the little dots in front with the fold line. And uh, you know the drill. You can match it. I just realized my microphone was turned off for the last hour, so that's fun. I wanted to show you, I've got the facing waistband pinned on. I've, the side seams are sewed, got it pinned on. And I wanted to show you before you finish up everything on your waistband, at this point you want to zip up your waistband, zip up your fly all the way, and make sure that looking straight on, that this seam lines up on both sides because now is the time to fix that if it doesn't. Mine does, happy with that. So then another thing I do is this um, is my where my stitching line for the top of my waistband is going to be. I took my chalk and I just drew a line at you know the 5 8 straight across. And that way if one side was slightly higher or lower the um, I'll, I follow the stitching line it'll make sure that the top of my waistband is level so that you don't end up when you're finally done with everything with a waistband that's like an eighth of an inch higher or lower on one side or another because that is very frustrating. So this is what I've done. I'm going to sew it now up over. We clip the corners, trim any bulky parts, 
and uh, flip it right side out and then I will be whip stitching it on the inside to hold it secure. I want to show you this is the waistband outside. This is the connecting seam here and then I came back and top stitched and not top stitched, under stitched and what that means is that say this is the underside here you push all the facing uh, in this case you push all the seam allowance towards the facing side and then as much as possible you can't go all the way to the edge but as much as possible I think I started here you stitch it again and it looks like I'm about an eighth of an inch in and what that does is when the waistband is folded over it's going to be a lot cleaner you're not going to see that facing peeking out it'll just have a nice fold line at the top. So that's important. as a mock-up but I love them I really love them I'll probably come back and make the full length um, off camera of course because you don't need to see this twice but primo so my opinion is that this pattern the design is good the lines are very sleek they're very smooth um, it it's flattering and with the exception of a body specific alteration the fit is good and that body specific alteration I think I pointed out before is that my waist is very high so I need a longer rise now I could have put my tape on and measured it before but I didn't I just wanted to see how the pattern fit as is and as typical I needed to lengthen it so what I did you can see is basically where this red line is um, I came back to this step where you tuck one pant leg inside the other drew a lower stitch line stitched it trimmed it reinforced it overcast it and so then I have more room up here and it fit well so that's not a problem with the pattern. That's just my personal body shape. And that's part of the fun of sewing is that you can tailor the garment to fit you. You don't have to try to fit something pre-made. And in it, with that alteration, it is very comfortable. The flared legs, you know, they flare out from way up high. And so there's no binding when you go to sit down. Nothing's cutting into you or anything. And I do like that there is a variety of views. I probably will never do this cuffed version. It really reminds me of my high school in the 80s, but I do like this one. So I will be trying that. The only con I can see is that sewing flies is hard. It is tricky. But if you take your time, and sometimes if you're unsure of how it works, instead of sewing a line because if you sew it and it's wrong and you have to unpick it, just put your straight pins in. Like pretend like you're basting it with your straight pins and play with it and see if that makes sense. And if it does, great, go ahead and stitch it. If it doesn't, well, it's really easy to pull the pins out, reposition it, and try again. 
their directions are actually pretty good. Um, they don't say everything. Some of it's kind of intuitive. But um, if you follow their diagrams, follow their directions, go on a YouTube video, you can, you can figure out a fly. And it looks nice. It looks really nice. So in general, I am giving this a yay. Would I make it again? Yes. Thumbs up. Good pattern. It is very uh, damp and rainy outside. I was going to take try to get out because the snow has melted and do some pictures outside. But it was crazy windy all night and now it's raining. So we have porch videos again. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.